So you want to play a board game, but you can't find your dice. What can you do? Well, microcontroller to the rescue, obviously. So what I have here is uh, Pi Pico microcontroller board. I have uh, seven signals display and I have a button. And each time I press this button, I get a new random number that's uh, actually between one and six. So it's quite similar. Uh, to the values you would get by throwing these dice. So, uh, of course, if you misplaced your dice or you simply want uh, to play in a fancier manner or you want to make sure there's no... Uh, <clears throat> there isn't something wrong with the dice, well, you can use this uh, microcontroller board. So, um, before playing, let's take a look at how uh, this is wired. So I have here a wiring diagram. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, this uh, microcontroller board here. Uh, we have uh, GPIO pins uh, 1 through GPIO 6. So GPIO 0 actually to GPIO 6. Uh, these are connected uh, to the 7 segments display. The 7 segments display also has a decimal point, but I'm not using it. So I'm just using uh, the numeric uh, display. So as you can see in this diagram, and this actually corresponds to the pinout here. I have uh, pin 1, which is ground, and uh, you can see here I'm uh, connecting it through a resistor uh, to my ground pin. So also I have the ground from uh, the microcontroller board connected to this ground rail. Okay, and then uh, I have in order uh, pin... Uh, two, three, four, five. So uh, the ones from the left, uh, and these are connected to GPIO 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then on this other side, I have uh, the, the rest of the pins, and I have uh, this uh, C segment connected to uh, GPIO 4. Uh, and you can see here the wires, I've placed them around like this, so it's uh, easier to see. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, segment A, which is pin 10 on this uh, uh, seven segments display, is uh, connected uh, to GPIO 6. So uh, be careful, uh, there are some... Uh, ground pins in between, so uh, don't connect the ground pin, connect uh, GPIO 6. And then uh, I have connected this button here, so it's, uh, as you can see on the diagram, it's actually connected uh, between ground and uh, GPIO uh, 16. So uh, you can see it here, uh, GPIO 16, and we also have uh, ground uh, connection here. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, on this uh, diagram I've also added a resistor. You can use it if you want. If not, uh, actually here I have not used the uh, resistor. And for this simple circuit it works. But uh, don't forget about uh, this uh, resistor for uh, the seven segments display because otherwise uh, your seven segments display will be uh, burned. Okay, so uh, now um, each time I press on this uh, button I get a new uh, random number being uh, generated. So let's take a look at this code. I'm starting with the most interesting part, the random number generator. So on this um, Pi Pico uh, board uh, we can access a random number generator at a specific address. So it's like reading a byte from memory. And uh, this is the address 
it's uh, constant. Uh, you can see it uh, up here when I keep my mouse on it. So address uh, one uh, C uh, in hexadecimal, and uh, this is added to this uh, base address. And uh, this is defined in the PyPico SDK. So uh, you basically create a pointer uh, to this address. And then uh, you are able to read um, by uh, bit by bit. So uh, the PyPico microcontroller uh, generates a one bit random number. So basically each time you read from this address, only a bit, uh, only a single bit is uh, valid, and uh, this uh, you can obtain it uh, by reading a byte and then performing an AND with a value one. So in this way, you get one bit, and this bit can either be a zero or one at random. And then uh, you basically need a for loop. And in this for loop, you can sample uh, any number of uh, bits. And in this case, I have this uh, random generate function that I written here. And uh, it gets uh, bits as a parameter. And it will actually, uh, in this for loop, it will read uh, bits, uh, bits. Okay, so this many bits will be read. And uh, they will be uh, concatenated into this uh, random uh, number. And it will be uh, obviously returned. So what we can do with this one, uh, for example, we can generate a digit. So this is something between zero and nine. So I'm uh, just reading eight bits, uh, actually, for generating a digit, you can read less than eight bits, but I was trying to read a byte. And then uh, taking the reminder of the division by 10. Or uh, you can generate a dice number. So remember, a dice will, uh, will have numbers between uh, one and six. So what I'm doing, I'm uh, dividing by six and keeping the reminder. And then uh, I'm um, uh, adding one. So it's, uh, so it's actually uh, something between uh, zero and five plus one makes it uh, between one and six. Okay, so uh, this is the dice uh, random number. Now, uh, apart from uh, this file, uh, I also have uh, two other important files. Uh, one is for um, the seven segments display. So what I have here, uh, I'm uh, first uh, initializing uh, my structures. So uh, I'm... Uh, specifying in this array the uh, pins uh, for, the, for, for each segment. And uh, first I'm performing a GPIO initialization, then uh, setting the direction as output. And I'm also uh, storing uh, this for later use uh, in uh, this uh, structure. It's actually a very simple structure. At this moment, it only has uh, these pin segments. Uh, but I usually prefer uh, having structures for uh, each peripheral because in future it's possible to add uh, something else here. So um, more or less, I've uh, walked through this code in previous videos. I will leave a link in the description if you want to look at it there. But uh, what it happens, uh, I have a clear function. And this function uh, basically uh, sets uh, the value false. So it will basically set a zero. 
uh, on the pin segment. Uh, it checks if it's minus one. As you saw, for example, the decimal point is not connected. So in this case, uh, nothing happened here. But if uh, the segment is connected to a pin, then that pin will be set to zero. Uh, then I have this show segment. It's uh, basically doing the same thing, checks if uh, the segment is connected to a pin and if so the pin is set to uh, logical uh, true so value one and uh, finally i have this show number which uh, receives the number to be shown it will first call uh, clear to turn off any uh, segments that are on and then uh, for each number uh, it will uh, turn on the corresponding segments. So in this case, uh, for uh, the number zero, uh, we'll have these segments being turned on. Uh, for number one, uh, we have only two segments turned on, and so on. Okay, and as usually with uh, C uh, switch case statements, don't forget the break statement. So uh, that's it for the seven segments uh, display. And we also have uh, something for the button. So uh, again, we have an initialization similar to the seven segments display. I have again a structure here. Uh, this structure uh, this time has uh, the corresponding GPIO pin set here. And uh, there's also a boolean uh, if uh, the uh, button is connected to ground, because otherwise it can be uh, connected to logical uh, one. Okay, so uh, this initialization simply uh, stores everything in the structure, then uh, initializes uh, the GPU pin, uh, sets the direction to input, and uh, if uh, is connected to ground then uh, it will call this uh, GPIO pull up on the pin and earlier I said that well you can uh, use a resistor uh, you can also use a pull up resistor but uh, the Pico microcontroller offers this functionality uh, basically enables an internal pull up resistor so you don't need uh, to explicitly add a resistor uh, when you are designing. And uh, if uh, it uh, is connected to logical one, then uh, you can uh, do this uh, GPU pull down. And finally, uh, we have a function to check if the button is pressed or not. So what happens here is uh, calling GPIO get on the GPIO pin. And then uh, if uh, it connects to ground, then uh, it will negate this uh, bang. Otherwise, uh, simply return. Okay, and that's all. So now uh, let's take a look at the main program. So I have here uh, the initialization for the seven segment display. Uh, I have here the GPIO pins uh, for each of the segments. So can see it's unexpected order, but this is because I have uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G segments. Uh, then I have uh, minus one for the uh, uh, dot, decimal dot, uh, and uh, then uh, the function is uh, called. Uh, after that, the initialization for the button and I have here the GPIO pin associated with the button and then a very simple uh, loop where uh, it checks if uh, the button is pressed and it also keeps track of this was pressed so that if you press it uh, very fast uh, it will not uh, be shown multiple 
times, but in any case, uh, it uh, will generate a new random number. And this uh, random number will be uh, displayed on the 7 segment T display, as, as, as shown on the image. And then there is a slip of 100 milliseconds. So this is uh, the protection against uh, cases where you will very rapidly uh, press the button and uh, basically you don't uh, get to see uh, the generated value because <coughs> it, it uh, already generated the number. So um, <coughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Program. Okay, so now that you know how this is built, let's try uh, playing with it. So let's assume I'm uh, with this yellow one. And now uh, instead of throwing the dice, I'm just pressing on this button. And I get a 6, so 42 with 6, it's 48. So now it's uh, the green. Uh, turn so let's press it's a five so one two three four five and so on there you go so it's uh, very easy to replace a dice with microcontroller board and it's also a fun project so I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time bye